WJBF News Channel 6 proudly presents the Golden Apple Awards, recognizing teaching excellence. The Golden Apple Awards is made possible by WJBF News Channel 6, Kroger, Augusta Flooring, and Master Automotive. Now, from the Augusta University Maxwell Performing Arts Theater, your hosts, Brad Means and Jenny Montgomery. Good evening, everyone. We are so pleased that you have joined us tonight as we honor the teachers who are shaping the future. You're shaping our next generation, and we certainly appreciate all the hard work you put in. I'm Jenny Montgomery. I'm Brad Means. Tonight's Golden Apple Gala, the culmination of 32 weeks during the school year when the crew from News Channel 6 visits schools around the CSRA and pays tribute to tonight's winner. They get an award that day. They get another award tonight and make a speech on television to you. And so the teachers are excited. The family and friends at Augusta University are excited as well. And we hope that you enjoy tonight's presentation as we honor some of the best people this community has to offer, our teachers. And we have some great presenters to help us give those awards out and bring those teachers to you. Beginning with our friends from Augusta Flooring, ladies and gentlemen, won't you welcome Mona and Doug Edmondson. Stan Horn, Tut Middle School. Stan Horn teaches math at Tut Middle School. He transitioned into that subject after spending a long time as a science teacher. No matter the subject, he's always there to make sure his students succeed. You'll also find him on the fields of the CSRA, refereeing football games. He's dedicated to helping kids do their very best in and out of the classroom. Sandra Hayes from Freedom Park Elementary School. Sandra learned a lot from her mother. She saw how good her mother was with children when she used to help her babysit the children in the neighborhood. Those babysitting jobs gave her the desire to make a difference in a child's life. And that's why she spent her adult life helping young children. Now, she's the inspiration to her pre-K students at Freedom Park Elementary School. Maybe one of them will grow up to be the next Sandra Hayes. Jarmichael Jones from Spirit Creek Middle School. Jarmichael Jones says his second grade teacher inspired him to pursue the love of mathematics. Now he shares that love and those skills with his students at Spirit Creek Middle School. The kids love him because he lets them lead the way. They take quizzes and their grades are the result of teamwork. The whole class gives its input and ideas to make sure each child can correctly answer a problem. What a great approach to his lesson plan. Tiffany Chrisman, she's from Butler High School. Tiffany's classroom at Butler High School is filled with beautiful artwork and talented art students. They work hard to tap into their creative side. Mrs. Chrisman says her room is a place where kids can escape the stresses of high school and just be themselves. It's also a place where artists of all skill levels can spread their wings and show the world their talents. Now let's see these wonderful teachers in action. Uh, I've had kids come back to me from college uh, and talk to me. I've had kids come back from middle school when I, you know, uh, even during the year this year, you know, I have kids always coming back and saying thank you at times, Mr. Horn because you've really made me realize what I can do. And uh, it's, that's just what makes me feel good, is when I see a kid smiling, or if they get, the, you know, they get a correct answer, the light goes off, and I really enjoy, I could be at Kroger's, I could be at Costco, somewhere, and a kid will see me and say, you're Mr. Horn, right? And I say, you remember me? Because I don't remember you, because I have, I mean, I've had over 3,000 kids <laughs> through the years, and so, but it really gives me good, you know, makes me feel good when I can be able to talk with them. Why do you go the extra mile? Well, I guess I got that from my mom. She said, what people do for you, you would turn your favor back to them. And I love working with kids. And I check on all my babies. If they out sick, something got to be wrong. Especially the ones that normal come every day and don't miss a day. So I take that out check on them. I really try to get to know my kids and I like, see what they're good at, what they kind of like a little bit. So. That's how I kind of started off. Like, I love coming here. It's no place I'd rather be. Like you say, I stay here late. 
whole lot and I just fulfilled me for me. So I love coming here. Like I tutor late all the time. My students say sometimes we stay here at six o'clock sometime, do some math and all the deals. So I'm rewarded really happily so. They remind me why I do this. They really do. They're just they make me feel so good, especially when they go off and I can show them off in the county, in the state, in the nation, because we had people at the national level last year. So just to be able to show my kids at Little Old Butler High School can do the work and just, they're wonderful and I follow them all the way through. I still have kids that have graduated college four years ago that still call me mom. Uh, the Golden Apple is a great honor to me, and I would like to thank my son, my daughter, my wife for their gift of encouragement throughout my teaching career. I would like to also thank my peers, administrators for their help during my career. I would also like to thank all my parents uh, for just giving me the chance to work with their kids and teach their, ch teach their kids during my career also as a teacher. But one person, most of all, and uh, I would like to thank is my mother, who is no longer with us, for encouraging me 30 years ago to get back into teaching and stick with teaching and work with good kids. Thank you. Good evening. First, I would like to thank God, because without him, nothing is possible. I would like to thank my mom for teaching me the love I have to care for children. I would also like to thank Dr. Singh for giving me the opportunity to work to serve our military children at Freedom Park. Now at last, I would like to thank Ms. Andrea Gilstrip for, for seeing my hard work and acknowledging me. The old Singh said, if you do something from your heart, it will come back double. Now I know what it means. Thanks everyone for giving me the opportunity. Good evening, everybody. Uh, really excited to be here tonight. I thought at the high school award day was over with, but really glad to be here tonight. I want to give a special thanks to the people of the CSRA, Richmond County Board of Education, and Spirit Creek Middle School. Got great teachers there. And also to my principal, Dr. Johnson, and to my students, Cheyenne Chandler, who nominated me. Also, can't forget about my mom. She told me I hadn't mentioned her. I'm honored to be the Golden Apple teacher of tonight. Um, there are so many great teachers in Richmond County, so I'm not sure if I'm great deserving of this, but I'm very, very, very much appreciative. All students can learn. That's my philosophy of education. Everyone has something great about them, and everyone can figure that out. Rather be math, like me, or English, or even a foreign language. We need to meet the kids where they are, find their motivation, and build on the skills that they bring to the table. No matter how students come to us, whether they come from a single parent home or upper class, home or even a single mama who's trying to raise their kids to be men while working two jobs, all students can learn. Our kids can also achieve. We as educators need to approach our students in our classrooms, our jobs, and our lives with confidence and purpose. And we work together and keep our students the best interests and to the forefront of our minds. We can all do better. We can all push each other to do better and believe that I believe in you. I want to thank all of my students and my classroom parents, past and present, because this night belongs to you as much as me. Thank you, all. I want to thank my family, friends, colleagues, students for this honor. At the doghouse, we are building a brand. We are the art dogs, and everyone knows us that in the county and in Georgia. It is about exposing them to new and exciting ideas that challenge their artistic vision taking them on adventures and showing that there is a whole world out there to experience. As teachers, we must be uncommon to have the passion to go beyond the norm. Don't be afraid to be the difference in your students' lives. And thank you all for taking me on this incredible journey. Thank you, teachers, and go art dogs. Now, please welcome our next group of presenters, Dr. Michelle Rhodes from McDuffie County Schools, the superintendent there, and Mr. Larry Frails from Kroger. Sally Jones instructs gifted students at Maxwell Elementary School and Thompson Elementary School. 
through differentiated instruction and STEM activities. Sally helps children to maximize their potential in her classroom. Helping students succeed is something that comes quite naturally to Mrs. Jones. Sally's family has a long history in education with her own children choosing the profession. Mrs. Jones is a remarkable educator and a visit to her classroom is always a special experience. Anna Williams. Anna Williams is living proof of someone destined to be an educator. As both of her parents were math teachers, education was a foremost priority in their home. Even though she thought about pursuing other things, her heart and passion led her to follow in her parents' footsteps teaching mathematics. Mrs. Williams is an extraordinary math teacher as evidenced in conversations with her students who love learning the subject from her. Anna gives credit to her colleagues and her family for helping her to continue to achieve her best. Maureen Adams likes science, but she loves anatomy. She shares her love for that subject with her students. She says when every lesson is about the human body, it's easy to keep kids interested. They pay attention because anything that impacts their body impacts their quality of life. She's been teaching for more than 20 years, and she's showing no signs of slowing down. With the support of her colleagues, administrators, and parents, she could easily go another 20 years. Thompson High School sure is fortunate to have her on their team. When we visited Arthur Harris' classroom, he had some special guests tagging along. His wife and mother made sure they were there for his big day. Mr. Harris says the support he gets from his family is key part of his success in the classroom. It is wonderful to see that that support in person during a special visit to Lakeside High School. Here are these wonderful teachers in action. I, I really am speechless when it comes to this. These are all people that I have taught with for years, known I have taught their children, and of course then my family who has supported me forever. And I guess I've done something right because I've had three to go into education, but I have a lot of educators before me going all the way back to my granddad. And this is, this is in my blood. This is just what I do. This is my 22nd year here. In fact, in this exact classroom, my 22nd year. And um, I'm not looking to leave anytime soon. I love teaching. Uh, I love anatomy, but I've, you know, I've taught other sciences as well. But this is where I'm meant to be, teaching anatomy. We've had several kids who have graduated from this program and gone on and become doctors. And that's what I want to see. I want to see kids become active members of our medical communities. Um, lots of different learning styles are addressed. We do centers every single day. So they, do tech they use technology to learn math. They do pencil and paper to learn math. They do body kinesthetics to learn math. They do cutting and pasting to learn math so that all the different learning styles are addressed. I know a lot of people have invested in me throughout the years, throughout school, throughout college, and um, I know people need that. I know, these kids need somebody in their corner. They need to know somebody's there for them, and uh, I just try to be that person for them. Good evening. It's, I've heard that teachers who love teaching teach children to love learning, and that's what I've tried to dedicate my career to do. I am blessed to have been allowed to teach children my whole life. My family, all the way back to my granddad, have been teachers and educators. My girls have followed in the steps behind me. But I just love to walk in the school every day and watch these young faces. I've seen some faces who now have become teachers and teach alongside me, and I think that's one of the greatest gifts. And those that I taught in first grade who now teach beside me, you know the years that have passed. But watching the light come on, watching these children grow and become the leaders of our country bring me the greatest joy. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without my wonderful family, my husband who's been my, by my side forever, my son, my daughters, my son-in-laws who 
are my sons, my administration, who are my friends, my colleagues who joined me here tonight, thank you. And for my dear friend who came from Athens to be with me tonight, I love you all and thank you for letting me do what I do. I'm sure you've all heard that it takes a village to raise a child, but what, that, what they forget to tell you is that it takes a village of teachers to raise, each, to raise each child. And behind each teacher is a village that supports him or her. And so that's who I'd like to thank this evening is my village that holds me up and gives me support when I don't think I have anything left in me. So first and foremost, I want to thank my God and my Savior who gave me healing when I needed it and gives me strength and mercy and grace each and every day. My family, I have a loving husband and daughter in the audience. My parents are both teachers, as Dr. Rhodes um, implied, <clears throat> and they have given me a great legacy of education. My students, I adore my students, and one of whom is with me tonight, he is also the one who nominated me for this award, and I am so grateful for that recognition. My ADK Sigma, Sigma chapter sisters, um, as they just support me from behind the scenes at all times, and my coworkers, my friends, um, I go to work every day and laugh and love right beside you. Thank you to Liz Reed, whom I've worked with forever, and she is an amazing support, and I'm so grateful to her in every way. Thank you again. Well, thank you so much, ladies. It is our pleasure to bring up our next presenters to introduce you to some more wonderful educators from right here in the CSRA. The superintendent of Aiken County Schools is with us tonight, Dr. Sean Alford. And he is joined from AECOM by Lessie Price, ladies and gentlemen. Addie Tepke says she knew she wanted to be a teacher when she was a third grader. She would make up tests for herself, take the tests, and grade the tests. Somewhere along the way, she realized she was really good at math. Now she uses those razor sharp skills to help her students at Aiken High School. Ms. Tepke has the knowledge and the patience to make sure they understand every step of the calculus process. They leave her class with a true appreciation of her favorite subject. Mary Pat Yawn is wrapping up a journey that started when she was just a child. She used to play school with her friends, and she was always the teacher. That dream has turned into a career that has influenced children in Gloverville, South Carolina for decades. Many people in the community are living successful lives thanks to the strong start they received in Mrs. John's classroom. Vicki Clare from Belvedere Elementary School. Vicki Clare is about ready to call it a career. She's earned it. She spent her life helping young people get a positive first impression of school. Her pre-K students at Belvedere Elementary School may not know it now, but they are being taught by a living legend. She's helped generations get the school year and their school lives off to a wonderful start. Jocelyn Jones, Schofield Middle School. When she's not working nonstop in the classroom, Jocelyn Jones is working nonstop at home. She has a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and a six-year-old. But somehow, she still finds a way to give her all to her students at Schofield Middle School. She teaches math. She also teaches the Pro Team program. The Pro Team program encourages students who are interested to pursue a career in education. Their classrooms are just as unique as they are. Let's take a look. I really think the kids make the job. 
Um, I could never see myself in a cubicle by myself doing work. I always like being around students. Um, I think they keep me younger because every year I learn new terminology for things and you know you get to see um, how they do grow from you know seventh grade to married and have children um, and it just they bring you a lot of joy. Well we like to stress that we come here to have fun but they have a job to do just like mommy and dad do and their job is to learn. We have to learn our letters so that we can read the beautiful stories like Owl Moon. It's one thing to nurture the mind, but you have to nurture and love the body too and make sure that their needs are met home and at school. I, I love children and I think they're special and um, it matters to me what, what they become in life. Um, and when I see them succeed, it, it makes my heart feel great. My students push me, my students motivate me. I come every day because I want to be here. Not that I have to be here, it's a choice that I make every day to get up, to come in, and to do my best in order to reach someone, if not every child that I encounter. Something has to click from somebody that day, and that's what motivates me, and that's what keeps me going. Good evening. When I told my dad that I really was going to college to be a teacher, he said, you're too smart to be a teacher. Why don't you be a financial planner? Why don't you be an engineer? And I said, no, dad, I've always wanted to be a teacher. And he said, well, if you're going to be one, then just make sure that you're a good one. I'm so honored to have been nominated by Christian Collins for this award because hopefully that means that I fulfilled my dad's challenge. I'm so thankful to have wonderful friends in the audience tonight to support me, including a student from the first year I taught and a student from this 29th year that I'm teaching. Thank you to the sponsors of the Golden Apple Award Program for this honor. Thank you to Mr. Kofer and Dr. Alford for this um, opportunity. Thank you to all the Golden Apple sponsors. I would like to thank Tina Gregory, who nominated me for this award. I was fortunate enough to teach her son, Trayton, a few years ago, and I hope I impacted his life as much as he impacted mine. He is a special young man whom I will always have fond memories of, and I know he will have a bright, successful future, as I wish for all of my students. I would also like to thank Dr. Alford and Aiken County Public Schools for the support over my 31-year career. And a special thanks to my Gloverville Elementary family and community who have embraced me over the years and entrusted me with their most valuable asset, their children. And to Dr. Tucker and Ms. Hewitt, my administrators, I want to thank you for your guidance and support throughout the year. I am proud to teach at Gloverville Elementary. It has been one of the best decisions in my life. Finally, thank you to my family, who have always encouraged me to do what I love. It is truly amazing to be given an award for, some, for doing something that you truly love. I love teaching. I love the relationships that I build with my students. I pray that my love, dedication, and commitment to my students has an everlasting effect on their lives. I thank my family, I thank my principal, Denise McCray, and our superintendent, Dr. Alfred, for all of their support. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you very much, ladies. Our next presenters are Marla Choice from Kroger, and Warren County High School Principal, Mr. Trevor Robertson. Let's give them a warm welcome. Carrie Ann Cushman, Parkway Elementary School. Carrie Ann Cushman's very first student was her brother. She, she was just a little girl and she used him whenever she wanted to pretend to be a teacher. Now she's a real deal changing lives and watching students succeed at Parkway Elementary School. Her energy and enthusiasm rubs off on her second graders and they love learning from her. Becky Bennett, Stevens Creek Elementary School. Becky Bennett is not only a teacher, she's a cheerleader. 
we got to witness one of her students' favorite cheers during her math lesson. Mrs. Bennett says it's a great way for the kids to celebrate success. They are happy when they get an answer right, and they are happy when their classmates are correct as well. It's a fun, effective approach to Mrs. Bennett's daily lesson plan. Marissa Powers, Mildred E. Freeman Elementary School. Marissa Powers was using stretchy bands when we came to her classroom. It was a way to help for her to help her fifth graders learn about polygons, quadrilaterals, and triangles. It was also a way to give her math students a break from the textbook. Just one of the many ways that Miss Powers brings her lessons to life at Mildred E. Freeman Elementary School. Delee Pollock Moore, Warren County High School. Delee Pollock Moore chose the classroom over the courtroom. She was studying to be a lawyer, but felt the call to teach. She answered that call and dedicated her life to helping students do their very best. She says she wants students to feel safe and loved when they're on campus. What a wonderful learning environment at Warren County High School. What an extraordinary group. Let's see what makes them great. Um, I'm an animated person in general, but I'm even more so when I'm in front of my children. Um, lots of all signals, lots of hand signals, just lots of different things to get their attention and keep their attention. I always remind myself that these are the people that will be taking care of me when I'm older. They'll be my doctors and they'll be um, the lawyers, they'll be the police officers um, that will be around when I'm an elderly lady um, and when my, when my children grow up. And so I'm just thinking about the adults. The, the big human person that I'm creating for the future. I find that you know the more that I can get them hands-on, up, moving, doing math, the easier it is for them to understand it. They can internalize it because they can see it, they can remember it, they can go back and say, oh hey, I remember we made this shape, what was that like? And then they can t take that and transfer that into their you know formal paper pencil assessments and further on down the year. I mean, seeing them grow, seeing them improve, seeing them succeed, seeing them happy, it just is the best thing ever. You know, when you get to change the life of a child, there's nothing better. And I just, that's my reward. Just knowing that I've been an influence in their lives, it's an investment in the kids. When they're in my class, they become my kids. When they're outside of my class, they're still my kids. And um, I do. I think I think about them just as much as I think of my own five children. So um, I just love them. <laughs> I think school should be like summer camp. It should be somewhere that kids want to be. It should be a place where kids feel safe, uh, that they feel like they're loved, um, and that they're going to be challenged. They're going to be um, asked to be creative and learn and go beyond just a textbook. Good evening. Teaching is not just my profession. It's my vocation. It's my calling, my blessing from the Lord. I am both humbled and honored to be recognized for something I feel that I was born to do. Thank you to my principal, Dr. Doolittle, for nominating me for this award. I am beyond grateful to work for leaders who not only acknowledge, but appreciate hard work and dedication. Thank you to my parents for always stressing the importance of education. To my wonderful husband, Brandon, and our two precious sons, Branson and Beck, you guys are the butter to my bread. Thank you to my second grade sisters for making work so much fun. And to my past and present students, please always remember to just keep swimming. I'd like to leave you with one of my favorite teaching quotes. Teachers who love teaching teach students to love learning. Thank you. Good evening. Teaching is a work of heart, and I am blessed to be able to pour my heart into my students every single day. I'd like to thank my husband and my family and my friends for supporting me through countless late hours, weekend projects, painting my classroom that have made my classroom special and unique and amazing. I'd like to thank my colleagues for inspiring me to think outside of the box and to teach outside of the box. And I'd like to thank my principal and my superintendents for encouraging all of us to be outrageous and outstanding teachers so that we can impact our students to their fullest potential. Thank you very much. 
First of all, thank you so much to WJBF for this awesome opportunity. I wish every teacher had the opportunity to feel as important and appreciated as we do tonight. A huge thank you to a very special young man sitting right out there, Anderson, and his sweet mom, who nominated me for this award. Your kind words and support have been such a blessing to me. Thank you to my family, my husband Darren, and my four girls who are out there for always understanding when I spend way too much time at school and for loving me anyways. <laughs> thank you to my dad and to my mom who's smiling down from heaven right now, who attended every single event for me when I was growing up and continue to be there for me and for my family and everything we do. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to say a special thank you. This is for my family at Warren County Schools, for my own family, for my students past and present who are part of my family. I also want to say something to the, to the audience. Tonight we have a national teaching crisis in our country. We have a national teacher shortage for the first time in our nation's history. And we need more young people to join these Golden Apple winners um, in changing the world. We have to change the world as teachers. We affect poverty. We affect crime. We give students a better opportunity for their tomorrow. So those of you that hear the call as we have, please help us be part of the change. Wow. What a powerful message and an appropriate one. Thank you, Dee Lee, and thank you, teachers, for all that you do. You are truly our heroes. And Jenny, our special night is just getting cranked up here at Augusta University. We're going to take a quick break right now. Please join us again. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. The Golden Apple Awards, brought to you by Kroger, Augusta Flooring, and Master Automotive, continues from the Maxwell Performing Arts Theater. And we welcome you back, everybody, to our Golden Apple Gala, honoring our very best teachers. What a special night it is, Jenny. And we're excited to bring up our next group of presenters. They are Frank Ward out of Master Automotive, one of our partners at Golden Apple, and Columbia County Schools Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Deborah Williams. Deanna McMurray, Augusta Christian. Deanna McMurray came to the United States from Nicaragua. She now gets to share her love of her homeland with her students at Augusta Christian. She's a Spanish teacher, but her classes are about so much more than just the language. Ms. McElmurray helps her students understand the food, culture, and way of life in all Spanish-speaking countries. It's a great way to give them a true global perspective. Janet Brunix, North Columbia Elementary. Janet Brunix has teaching in her DNA. Her mom was a teacher, her dad was a teacher, and she says she started out teaching her stuffed animals and has stuck with it ever since. Now, she's in charge of a bright group of third graders at North Columbia Elementary School. She challenges her students to do their best every day so that they will be well prepared as their academic careers continue. Erin Bagwell, Brookwood Elementary School. Erin Bagwell has lots of energy, enthusiasm, and patience. And her special education students reap the benefits from those traits. She spends time working with each student and celebrating every success. They make progress every day with every lesson. Ms. Bagwell's class is truly a bright light at Brookwood Elementary School. Jennifer Whitaker, Lewiston Elementary School. Jennifer Whitaker says she feels like she was born to teach children. And she's probably right. She's been hard at work shaping her, her, their lives for 31 years. She says the students are her babies. It's that strong family feeling that lets the kids know that they are truly loved. And when you're a second grader, that can be a very powerful feeling. The children know that Mrs. Whitaker's classroom is warm, safe, and a place to grow and learn. They love what they do and truly I tell my shows. kids always, Spanish is easy, facile. And they say, no, it's not. I say, yes, it is. So I just try to... Um, bring music, and they love music, and songs, and 
I think that way they love to learn and they're so passionate and they are so happy every day they come and I love that. Well, I mean, they're, they're just really sweet and I love to see their little light bulbs go off. You know, third grade is a huge jump from second grade. The responsibility that we expect that they have and just the work level that they have to do. You know, I really care about them and I want them to do their best. So in order for them to do that, I kind of have to do my best and, you know, we have to have a little bond and an understanding between each other. Uh, do some of your voices that you do to get their attention. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I love children, and I believe that all children can learn. So that's why I decided on this career. Very individualized, student by student. Um, we celebrate the simplest growth. Um, we work hard, and we like to celebrate um, the growth that these children make, and they make tremendous growth each year. We are preparing these kids for real life. 30 years ago, we were just teaching, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic. But nowadays, we need to pre prepare these kids for life. We need to challenge them. They need to be ready when they go out in the real world to handle problems. You know, they got to stand on their own in a, in a big society, so we're trying to get them ready. This is my family. These are my kids. They're my babies, and I love them. And they know that from the very beginning. And year after year, it's like I have my home family, and I have my school family and I just want them to be the best they can be. Buenas noches a todos. Muchas gracias por la invitación. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to speak in English. Um, good evening. I want to thank my administration, my fellow teachers, especially Mr. Marchin and Mrs. White for nominating me, my family, and most importantly, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for always believing and supporting me. Muchas gracias. What an honor to be chosen for this award. It's humbling to be recognized for doing what I love to do. I'm grateful for God for giving me the heart and passion for this job and allowing me to impact others. I'm appreciative of the fellow educators and administrators that have taught and inspired me throughout my journey and helped shape me to be the teacher that I have become. I am also grateful to my parents, who are both teachers, for setting the example of working tirelessly to touch the lives of students. I am thankful for, to my husband and my three boys for their patience and understanding of the many hours that I devote to my job and my students. I also would like to thank the Walden family for this nomination and for blessing me with the opportunity to teach two of their wonderful children. Good evening. You know, I've had lots of apples. Red Delicious, Granny Smith, and even a few rotten apples. But this golden apple would not be possible if it weren't for my best friend in the world, and that's Lori Tucker. Thank you. I would also like to thank my friends and family, the teachers that I work with, my administration, and my parents. But mostly, I would like to thank my students of 31 years, because without them, I would not have been able to do what God has called me to do, and that is teach. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next presenters, Wayne Morgan from Master Automotive, Dr. Cheria Clark from Edgefield County Schools, the Director of Federal Programs. Thank you. Bill Cheatham, Strom Thurmond's Career and Technology Center. Bill Cheatham is an accomplished welder. He has been honing his skills for most of his life. And for the better part of the past 20 years, he has been sharing those skills with his students. He is churning out the master craftsmen and women of the future. He teaches at the Strom Thurmond Career and Technology Center. It's a place where the students can find a great instructor and a lifelong friend in Bill. Belinda Ziff, Douglas Elementary School. Belinda Ziff has been educating successful students for more than 30 years. She's taught generations of young people. She still has the energy and enthusiasm that she brought to her job when she started this awesome career. Her students feed off that positive vibe 
and they love having Ms. Ziff in preschool. Donna Leopard, Fox Creek High School. Donna Leopard always knew she wanted to be a teacher. She just didn't realize what kind of teacher she wanted to be until she went off to college. She was studying math when she realized she'd rather be studying stories instead of crunching numbers. That's when she changed paths and pursued her love of literature. Now she gets to share her love with her students every day at Fox Creek. Justin Craig, Strong Thurman High School. You can hear the sweet sounds coming from Justin Craig's classroom every day at Strong Thurman High School. He helps his students become skilled musicians in his role as band director. He also helps them compete at the state level. The kids are willing to do what it takes to rise above the competition. They've been known to put in 80 hour work weeks so they will be ready to perform. That kind of work ethic shows the respect and admiration they have for Mr. Craig. Inspiring your minds and making a difference, let's meet them. Went into Tran Tech for 16 years and, uh, as an um, engineer. Come out of that, said I want to go teach, and teach these kids do some stuff like I'm doing. Just in mingling with the kids. I mean, they got good days and they have bad days. They have home problems, they have school problems. I hear it all and I try to work with them all. I mean, I've got kids right now that they don't know whether they're going to come to school the next day. But I like to sit down, talk to them, and listen to them, and I do anything in the world for them. Whatever it takes is what I'm going to do. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be a teacher because I wanted to um, help people. And the little people, they come so energized and they want to do a good job. They want to please you. And we just have a great time, get to play and have fun, get to learn a lot of things. Um, it's like the little poem, everything I learned, I learned in kindergarten. Well, we learned it in preschool too. I started out as a math physics major in college. Um, when I got to college, I took a pedagogy class and those professors just sort of reeled me in. Um, we're doing dystopian novels right now in both my CP classes and honors classes. And they really love these books. Even some of my boys, which are reluctant readers, have said, I've never read a book in high school until this one. Let's to have uh, great mentors that were in music. I just had a, actually had a joy from actually just playing music. I wanted to share that joy with students. Several of these kids, actually the senior class that's graduating this year, they're my true wound to the tunes. They've been my only, they are, I've been the only band director. They've had me in sixth grade through four years, three years in middle school, and then four years here at the high school. So it's great to see that growth from uh, sixth grade up until now. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that I could thank, but all the career center people that I work for, my teachers and my staff, they're all great. Mr. Arthur Northup, my boss, he is wonderful to work for and just as easy to get along with. My wife out there, all my kids know her very well. If they are good, they get brownies. If they're not, they don't get them. But they know her very well in my class. Other thing, too, is it's a great feeling to sit there and have a former student class, present you his check stub, and say, this is what I just made this week by learning how to weld. That does a great thing for me and for them. Just today, I had one come in today, started a brand new job, and is going to move out and get on his own and make a wonderful career in welding. Thank you. I am humbled and honored by, my, by this award and accepted on behalf of my students, past and present, who are and will always remain in my heart. It's one thing to do something, but to have others recognize it is a great feeling. Thank you to WJBF and sponsors for giving this award. I would also like to thank my principal, Mr. Bobby Turner, for nominating me. A special thank you to my family for supporting me throughout my teaching career, and especially my husband, who has encouraged me to follow my dreams. I love the Lord, 
and I know that I can do all things through him, and I give him the glory. I pray that my students will love the Lord and achieve their dreams also. The highlight of my teaching career is when a student comes to me and says, Ms. Ziff, I wish I was back in your class. I would like to close with a quote from Mother Teresa, which is special to me. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Thank you. First, I would like to thank all the sponsors of the Golden Apple Award. Um, as a band director, I have the opportunity to build long-lasting uh, relationships with my students. They become like family to me. So I want to first thank my immediate family, but also thank my band family, uh, thank our administration in Edgefield County. I uh, also continue to thank my uh, family at Strong Thurman High School. Um, I'm just lucky to be in a great situation with great kids and uh, great parents. So thank you for the award. Thank you, WJBF, for sponsoring this. Thank you. Well, uh, congratulations to all of you. Our next group of Golden Apple winners will be presented by Dr. LaMonica Hillman, Assistant Superintendent for Richmond County Schools, and our friend Larry Frails from Kroger. Shelly Wolf. Diamond Lakes Elementary School. Shelly Wolf could stand up in front of her class and lecture all day if she wanted to, but she's discovered that it's much more enjoyable to wrap her lessons. Her students prefer that approach as well. It seems that hip hop, rhyming, and rhythm beat the textbook anyway. It makes learning fun at Diamond Lakes Elementary School. Carol Clark, A.R. Johnson, Health Science and Engineering, Magnet High School. Carol Clark used to be a social worker. She enjoyed working with adults, but felt a strong pull to make a move into education. She knew she could make an impact on a lot of young lives. And that's just what she's done. Whether it's teaching them how to eat right in her health class, or leading them to championships as an athletic director and coach, she does it all. Her students know they can count on Carol Clark. Kimberly Taylor, Rollins Elementary School. Kimberly Taylor burst into tears when we walked into her classroom. It may have been the sight of her best friend, her husband, and a big crew from News Channel 6. But the truth is, those were tears of joy. They represented the deep love she has for her job and for her students. She teaches second graders how to be great readers at Rollins Elementary School. By the time our visit was over, we were all teary-eyed too. Gina Kitchens, Glasscock County Consolidated School. Gina Kitchens takes her students on a special journey during their kindergarten careers. When she first meets them, they are just learning to recognize letters. By the end of the year, they are reading full sentences and beginning to read books. And when she's not teaching, she's boosting. Mrs. Kitchens gives a ton of her time to the Booster Club. She works hard to make sure sports teams have what they need at Glasscock County Consolidated School. Here are these devoted teachers in their classrooms. Well, I just really want them to just be the best them that they can be. Um, I really love the kids. Um, I'm here for the kids, so I just really want them to be the best them that they can be when they grow up. Well, they're going to be because of you, and, and, and you give, obviously, your heart to them. What do you get back? What do you take home at the end of the day that makes you say, thank goodness I decided to be a teacher? I think it's just, you know, when I hear or when I see that light bulb finally you know, flashes on in these particular students' heads, like, it's like, wow, you know, my job is done. So I think just by me continuing to see those things, it really just makes me happy at the end of the day. It makes me feel so good when students come back and they tell me, Coach, if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't be where I am now. And when I see this and when I write recommendations for students, 
Every student I write a recommendation for, they get money. I pray about it as I write for the student. They come back, coach, I got the scholarship. That's what makes me feel good. Because I had such a great third grade teacher. She was such a, a teacher to look up to. And I felt like in my younger years, my teachers cared so much about reading. So that's why I wanted to get into elementary. There are some days as a teacher, sometimes you just get frustrated and you just feel like you didn't reach all of your students every day. And that bothers me because I know I'm a very structured and sometimes very firm teacher, but my students, oh, I want them to learn. I want them to grow. I don't, I don't want them to get stuck and say, hey, I didn't learn that in second grade, and then go to third grade, and it gets harder and harder. I want them to know this, know it with confidence. When they get to third grade, they're ready. I just love working with the small kids because they're so loving right now, and they really enjoy learning, and actually learning how to read is a very important thing for me. Each one of these are my kids in the classroom, so I feel like they're mine. So I want them the best for them while I've got them here. Good evening. I give God all the praise. I am truly grateful. Most of all, I'm thankful for Miss Christina Mazart for nominating me and working with her son as well. I'm thankful for my family being supportive, my friends, neighbors, co-workers, students, thank you, thank you. I see many of my students out there. Mr. Tudor being so supportive and all of my administrators whom I've worked with. I just want to say thank you, thank you. I also want to leave you with a scripture. To say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that is what I always tell my students. Thank you, and have a blessing. Good evening, everyone. Each day, this prof profession teaches me not to give up because of one hard day, not to give up because of 50 or 100 hard days. Do you know why I do not give up? I do not give up because my students need me like I need them. I love watching them grow academically and individually. Thank you, WJBF and the media sponsors for recognizing my contributions to education. Thank you, Ms. Callan, for helping me to step outside my box and try new things. Thank you to my husband and my two handsome sons who realize I'm mom to many other children outside of our homes. Thank you, Dr. Ray, and my great group of second grade teachers at Rollins Elementary School. Thank you to my awesome parent who's here and my wonderful friends from the church. Thank you to the beautiful ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha for supporting me. Thank you and have a good evening. Uh, ladies, wait just a minute. I have to tell our viewers at home that you missed something with these two. It was off camera during the video. Carol was, was raising her arm as people in the audience cheered when she made the comment about every letter she's written. Her students have gotten money. Brad and I would like you to write a letter for us too when our contracts come up. And, and also, <laughs> Help us. sweet Kimberly, when her video was playing and she was weeping in the video, she was standing here wiping her eyes. And I, it's like, you already said it. You know this. You said it. <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're, so con you're so convicted and it comes across. Thank you for what you Beautiful. do. Beautiful. Absolutely. Committed to their jobs. I will say this, at the very end of Kimberly's speech, some deltas in the audience were a little uncomfortable, so <laughs> wanted to give you all a shout out as well. Well, it's time now to bring out our last presenters of the evening. Please give a warm welcome to Burke County School Superintendent, Mr. Rudy Falana, and Will Schaefer from Master Automotive.
Stan Dobson, Burke County High School. Stan Dobson teaches art at Burke County High School. He shows children how to use lines, shading, color to create things of beauty. He also teaches them life skills that ensure that they go out into the world with all the confidence they need to succeed. He wants the kids to work hard on their assignments and work even harder to make master masterpieces of themselves. Michael Foster, Evans High School. Michael Foster really knows how to make the past come to life. The students are engaged, inquisitive, and excited about U.S. history lessons. He's also a good friend. Mr. Foster knows that high school can be stressful for students, and he's always available to help them find solutions to any problem they might have on campus or off. That's why he's such a great hit with the kids at Evans High School. Felicia Lovett, Blakeney Elementary School. When Felicia Lovett isn't busy in her classroom at Blakeney Elementary School, she's very busy at home. She's the proud mother of four great children, and she tries to treat her students as if they were her own. That includes giving them rides home from school, checking on them after hours, and uh, forging strong relationships with their parents. It takes a lot of effort, but the result is a connection with her kids that can last a lifetime. Teresa Harris, Grovetown High School. Terry Harris teaches graphic design at Grovetown High School. Her kids are super creative and are making some really cool things in her classroom. From posters to invitations to vinyl signs, you can see their work all over the community. When they leave Mrs. Harris's class, these young people are ready to go to work and start a career in the graphic design industry. These teachers are educa educating our future leaders and loving every minute of it. Isn't that the ultimate masterpiece to look at the works of exemplary students, to see them achieve their dreams, and to understand that you had just a very small part in that journey. That's the satisfaction in knowing that their pursuits are being successful. And so my students hear it often from me, that it's process over product. In so many ways of life, it's all about the digging. Uh, it's, boy, it's hard to explain what you get from it. There's so much satisfaction, because you see, I, I've had kids who, you know, want to get into MIT or wanted to get into you know a uh, Naval Academy and have done that I've got other kids and I just need to get them to graduate and either way we get to those things it's a victory because you know it's based on that kids abilities and where they're going and so you just have to adjust for all those kids and that's the important part to me is find, helping that child find success whoever they are I am an inclusion teacher this year. I have four special needs students and myself and the special ed teacher, Ms. Ashanti Gibbons. We kind of sort of team teach and they stay with me for a little while and then they mainstream and they go to her for a little while. I sacrifice a lot. I do come in some days and, you know, we don't have such a good day and, you know, the kids are kind of sort of up in arms or whatever, but you just have to deal with it. And I do believe that building relationships with their families, calling their parents, stopping by, you know, even if it's in the projects, in Pilgrim Way, Briarwood, Magnolia Acres, you know, if they're put off the bus, giving them a ride home, dropping them off, building those type relationships. And everybody was like, how do you have such good discipline? And trust me, it wasn't me. It was that I had those parents on speed dial. So awesome when they come back to me and say, oh, I'm doing this, or when they're in college and they're um, emailing me now of all their wonderful things they're doing. Um, I, I think the best thing I received this year was an invitation. When I first started working, I had, uh, I taught um, fifth grade. I had uh, two students that got married over the summer, and they were in my fifth grade class, and they invited me to their wedding. I just thought that was so awesome. So I, you don't know that you made an impact on that student or in your class until they grow up. Art is a lens through which we view the world and gain a greater sense of self, compassion, and empathy. As an art educator, it's been my privilege to present students a look beyond the obvious. I'm so thankful tonight. I'd like to thank the amazing Burke County Public School System. I'd like to thank the best parents ever, the most nurturing ones, guiding me into this. To the students, the faculty and staff at Burke County High School, to my nominating student, Amanda Durant, to my amazing, beautiful, and loving wife, Michelle, and my supportive family, Caleb and Hannah, and most importantly, to God 
who ordained my steps in my journey. Thank you. I'm both honored and humbled to receive this prestigious award. First, I'd like to thank God for giving me this blessing. Next, I'd like to thank my children, Ranisha, Christian, Christiana, and Chrislyn. They are truly the wind beneath my wings. Next, I'd like to thank my students and all of my parents. I was given an extremely difficult task of teaching the 11 most challenging students in the school. So, I was told, when you're given lemons, make lemonade. I didn't know that that lemonade would lead to me winning a Golden Apple Award. I'd like to thank some people that made this possible. Some of my mentors were Chef Alfonso Williams, uh, Miss Kimberly Green and her husband, Mr. Charles Green, donated $400 in the front office and we were able to buy school shirts, take them to the Columbia Zoo on a field trip. We were able to buy projects, um, supplies, solicit the local churches to get the students clothes and shoes. I would also like to thank Mr. Gibbons, who was my pair pro. Oh Lord, they really almost um, made, ran him out of the classroom, but he stayed. So Mr. Gibbons, if you're out there, thank you. I would also like to thank some of my other mentors that donated um, their time, the United Way, Georgia Power, and the mayor's office. Um, I would just like to let the teachers know that in today's society, these children are coming in with more and more issues and more and more challenging problems. Please, I implore upon you to get to know your students. Build relationships with your students. And I want to leave you with this last quote. You can't teach a child until you reach a child. Thank you. I've never taken much thought into believing in fortune cookies until my fortune read you could prosper in the field of education. I will be retiring this month after 20 years of teaching and I definitely feel I have prospered in the field of education from the love and support from my families, students, administration, parents, faculty, friends, and staff. Through the beautiful thank you cards from students, the wonderful letter written by the Cassida family nominating me for this prestigious award tonight. The hugs, the surprise birthday parties, a student-led retirement party, sweet tea, wedding invitations, sports activities, piano recitals, plays, graduation announcements, and birthday parties. I've been blessed with teaching preschool, first grade, fifth grade, and ending my career at Grovetown High School. Go Warriors! I have thoroughly enjoyed watching my students prosper through the years. I will always cherish those memories. Thank you very much. A wonderful group of teachers yet again. Always amazing to see all gathered here tonight. It's always wonderful to look back and see the clips from the stories that you do, Brad, and um, be reminded of the impact that they have. It's and, special. and it's two ways, because they all seem to talk about what they get from it as well. Yeah, it's incredible, and we don't take any of it for granted. Not only the mm -hmm. teachers here who won the Golden Apple Award, but all of the teachers watching at home and all who have ever touched our lives, we will never, ever forget you. We thank you all for joining us tonight for the Golden Apple Awards, and we hope you're going to enjoy a well-deserved summer vacation, teachers. Have a good night. Golden Apple Awards, a special presentation of WJBF News Channel 6, was brought to you by Kroger, Augusta Florin, and Master Automotive.